One of the important aspects when you're setting up your business is figuring out how you're going to collect money from your clients. The simple way is, you know, we mail invoices, but there's got to be a way for them to get the proposals over, uh, pay deposits, and just in general, how the money gets collected is really an important aspect of it. Because once you've figured out all the other fun part about starting a business and the business model you're going to use and the product or services you're going to sell and processes and procedures and everything you put into a business, this is that collection side. And it's something that even I have, over the time of being in business since 2003, I've changed to a lot of payment systems. I've looked at a lot of systems. And um, right now, this is where we're at in 2019. I figured, why not share some of my experience and maybe it will help you with some of this struggle of figuring out how to collect money from clients. Now, we have two different systems we use. We're using uh, Stripe on the back end for collecting. We also use PayPal. So those are the two ways we take in money for that. And of course, we have uh, companies that were here in the US where they mail us checks a lot. That's actually still probably the largest amount of our dollars come in through physical mailed in checks. That's the way a lot of our uh, local businesses like to do business with us. And we're fine with that, you know, makes a make a trip to the bank deposit. Those are kind of obvious ones. Uh, Stripe, we switched to this year. I really like Stripe. Um, I'm going to share some of the experience I've had with that. It's been very good. And PayPal is nice. Uh, PayPal is just really convenient for ways to get people who just need to send you a few dollars and things like that. And uh, when you have a PayPal business account, using PayPal as your backend business account, not bad. So we have a PayPal business account and we have our standard local, uh, we actually use a credit union. We use that as our bank account uh, for standard banking. And that's uh, all the back end stuff. So let's talk about how that money gets there and some of that process and procedure. So Invoice Ninja, we're going to cover in a second, but this is our primary methodology that we send out invoices to all of our regular clients. But we offer consulting via YouTube. And uh, that has been a learning experience as well. Like I'm always looking for easier ways for clients to find time, book us, and pay us online. And we were sending them Invoice Ninja uh, invoices out. And we realized because a lot of these are one-offs, it's creating a lot more customers. And we already have uh, 6,500 customers in Invoice Ninja. And he's like, well, do we want to keep adding these people to that customers? Because a lot of them are one-offs, wanted a half hour, an hour of consulting to get uh, some tasks done or needed some help with a small project. For those clients, we're using the You Can Book Me, You Can Book dot Me system. Uh, it actually is really nice. This one, we looked at a few different ones. One of the things I liked about this is it didn't bug me about the way it wanted permissions. And uh, the permission problem was some of them wanted full access to like my Google account to link to it. And I'm like, no, I only want them to see a calendar and share a calendar with them. I didn't understand them wanting full access. I guess some of them do because they want to be able to send emails on your behalf and everything else as you in your Google account or whatever account you link to it. And I decided not to because we do use G Suite on the back end. This only wanted calendar permission. That was the first thing that made me happy. The service is relatively cheap and it's an easy way for people to book us. Now, uh, you can see the booking up here. It's lawrencesystems.youcanbook.me, but that's not how we actually do it. Uh, the, our process and intake procedure, that sometimes people choose not to follow, uh, is you go to our contact page, you fill a form out, we read what you are requesting in a form, we will email you back with a link if it's something we can do, or sometimes you say you've asked for something that's beyond the scope of our services we offer. So I do recommend before you book and pay us, because we have this set up, you have to pay us for the booking, um, make sure it's something we can do. But people are strange and will just send us money sometimes and it becomes a confusion. Uh, this is what it looks like embedded in our website. We call it uh, schedule human interaction and you can general support with Lawrence systems, one hour, half hour. And we set the prices in here and we we're uh, very open about how much we charge for things. Cause I, I dislike companies that try to hide prices for everything. We do custom quotes when it's something not just hourly, but some people go, I just want 30 minutes of your time. Well, no problem. We have a fee for that. Uh, Cause that's a, when you book a time slot and we like to be very upfront about it because that's, that was a lot of the questions we were getting before is how much is it for 30 minutes of your time? I'm like, well, let's just answer that question and put it on there. I don't like to be uh, opaque about any of the ways we run our business, but you can go in here and you can book, pick the time slot that you want, 30 minutes, first name, last name. Uh, what would you like help with? And we have you reiterate uh, basically after, even after the contact form, just to reiterate well, exactly what the task is that you want us to do. You put your credit card in, send us the bookings, we send the confirmation and done. 
It is odd to me the number of people that want to call us and just read us a credit card over the phone. We don't do that. We don't support that. Um, we make you go through a system by which you fill out forms and things like that. You can't just call us with a credit card over the phone. Not not the way we do it. So that's the You Can Book Me system. And uh, this is going to Stripe on the back end. Uh, so that's that's this particular system. And maybe your business doesn't do this, uh, but this was kind of an easy way for us to sell time slots. Now there is an integration that I'm not using, but you can actually have the You Can Book Me clients auto generate with a Zapier integration into in Invoice Ninja and have it generate the same client data and fill it all out in Invoice Ninja. We just didn't really see the need to do it there. We figured we'd just do it this way because um, they're one-offs. So I'm gonna close this and now we'll jump into Invoice Ninja. So. Invoice Ninja, what is it? It is open source invoicing. And despite uh, somewhat angry commenters on some of the other videos, it's open source, but that doesn't mean you get the hosting for free. Someone says it's not free because they charge for hosting. Kind of their business model. Um, but you can have all the software and host it yourself, which is what we're doing. So I'll, I'll jump over here to pricing. This is what their pricing is as of July of 2019. They have their free forever plan, Ninja Pro plan, enterprise plan. Um, and if you host it yourself, you essentially are getting the enterprise plan because you get every feature. There's no nothing. There's nothing you don't get when uh, you get the uh, self-hosted version. All the features are there as long as you have it up to date. But if you host it yourself, think about that. If you're trying to save $12 a month, you have to set up your own mail server and all the functions around it and make sure you did the security right for your site. And then you're on your own for updating the source code and the site. So there's all the things that you should be a good sysadmin uh, to do. I have a lot of uh, freelance friends, some designer friends and some consulting friends that, you know, they're not techie, so to speak, uh, as far as backend or DevOps. So they choose this and they've been really happy with the uh, uh, version on here, just like an $8 a month. A lot of them are like, you know, independents, have a couple independent artist friends. And they're like, yeah, this is easy to quickly send out invoices. So uh, you can check them out. I do have an offer code for them. Don't have to use it. Uh, um, but, you know, hey, whatever, it helps channel out and lets them know that um, I've talked to the developers quite a bit and they're amazing people. Great. I've, like I said, you can go through the history and I go in depth on the system of how much I love it and are still using it since we switched to it about a year and a half ago. This, all you got to do is change .com org. if you're wondering, because some people said, hey, where is the free version? Uh, it's right here. And they even have a whole guide on how to set up the self-hosting. They have great documentation for how the API works, dev guide, how does uh, integrations work, and it's all on GitHub. So when you hit download, you can download all the source code right away and or go onto their GitHub and see all the source changes. I love companies doing this in the public. It's being very actively developed. They are working on the back end of... Uh, Kind of like a code refactor of getting a new version set up so there's uh, lots of active development on here and it's been great now let's get into the actual invoice ninja itself and i'm going to show you how it looks in the back end here for our stripe this is our test data so this is the invoice ninja interface uh and like i said this is where most of our clients live but this particular system is our demo system uh so in case you're wondering you're not seeing any real client information here dewey cheatham and how Great law firm. Uh, this law firm is the fake law firm, and but it is a real address. Uh, that's Big Beaver Road. I think that actually I pulled up a Tim Hortons. Uh, there's just some amusement because we have a road called Big Beaver here that is at exit 69. I'll quit being childish and get back to the topic. Um, you can look that up though. <laughs> so Dewey Chief and How is there's our address. Uh, it nicely embeds a map and everything else. So if we have to do directions to that particular client. Uh, we can pretty cool uh, and let's walk through the process of how we extract money from clients and how we give quotes and how they pay us because that's what we're here for so we're going to start with let's give them a quote for something new quote and let's do data drops because it's easy and i have a template in here for it so data data network drops Real basic, uh, you know you can set products up and all that i go in depth on the whole thing by the way Spin up the free version if you want to test any of this out and just play with it. I highly recommend it. They have that free version. It does not require a credit card on your site. So if you're just curious and you're like, I don't know if I should sign up, use a fake email address if you're so concerned with it. Uh, but they never spam or send me junk mail or anything. And I signed up with my real address. Uh, and it's not because they know me. They just aren't spammers. So uh, sign up with an email address and you can play with the system yourself hands on without even having to download the code. And like I said, it's going to, well, when you get the free version, it is a little, um, a few features are disabled. They have the comparisons on there versus the self-hosted one where everything's on. So 
back to this. So here is the uh, install network drops, wall fish tested plated, and this is what it looks like when we start drawing up the quote. This is actually, um, because you can customize the invoices, this is what our invoices look like. We have them custom, you know, get your logo on there. I kind of like the, keep the theme of the orange, we like orange. Uh, so it's got the client name that way and the little, right here's the quote. Now let's update this quote. We're gonna say they needed five data drops. So, you know, and this is a common call we get. Uh, we get a call for infrastructure and we have some pricing for installing data drops. And we go out, look at the look at the job, or sometimes they're just really simple, or we have a lot of what we refer to as move ad change work with existing clients. And that's what this would be. You know, your client say, hey, we just uh, hired two more people, but we realize we don't have network drops where those two people are gonna go. So uh, we'll go put this here. Partial deposit, that's frequently a thing in here. So we're gonna go 400 bucks, for partial deposit. And just like that, partial due, total due, it, it generates the invoice. Now, emailing the quote, just hit email customize it. I like to customize it and they use a, they have a whole lot and there's a lot in the documentation here. So a uh, quote from account. So you can see what it looks like. New quote 0012 from LTS demo invoicing because it has our company name in here, uh, you know, or data drops. I like to do this because that becomes part of the email header. Oh, um, you're seeing there. And we have a different wording that we use, but it's kind of cool. It's going to send them the email with an attachment uh, uh, with a PDF attachment so they can see it, but they get to click the link and go into their <clears throat> client portal, which I'm going to get to here. And uh, so it's pretty straightforward. But if they go in the client portal, you get to see if they viewed the code. So we're actually going to help market a sent. I'm not going to actually send the email. Those email addresses don't exist at Dewey Achievement House, so we wouldn't be able to see it. Now we're going to go view in portal. So you can get their view. I'm opening an incognito window. So we see it exactly as a client, like not logged in. You can put passwords in the client portal. You just do that in a custom file. It's really easy to do. So now here is what that looks like to them. So they can see quotes sent to them. And this is actually the whole client portal overall. So they can see the quotes, invoices, documents, payments, payment methods. They can keep payment methods on file. And that's part of the Stripe integration we'll get to in a second. But uh, we send them a quote. This is what it looks like. They go, that looks good to me. I approve. Now, the approval process is only partial here. The approval process is the first step. The next step is paying because there's a deposit on this. If there wasn't, it would just be a converted uh, quote and converted over to the invoice side. So we're going to go ahead and say uh, pay with. They can pay with a new card. and It'll bring them up to uh, put a new card in, but they can keep cards on file. And this is where the Stripe integration comes in. So pay with the Visa card on file. And we've got all fake demo numbers in this. So it goes through the process and pretends to pay. And uh, so you can walk you through it. So now they've done that. Successfully applied payment. Awesome. So now they have this invoice. And actually, I did this twice because I was playing with it earlier. So now they actually have two of them for the same amount because I only sent one, but this is the one they approved. So there are two of them in here. So that's what it looks like on their side. We're going to get this out of the way. And we'll go ahead and just refresh this page. And you see how it's converted. Now, please note, I right clicked on this portal and each person gets their own link so you can see which one they viewed. So if you emailed the quote to multiple, multiple people that you can see who viewed it and who did it. If you little mouse over here, viewed on July 11th, this person just sent, not viewed. So there's no activity on there. And if we go to view the client here, we look at the activity. When you scroll down the activity, you can see uh, Dewey Human Child viewed invoice here. Dewey Human entered payment and gives you a payment reference. Uh, for this to let me know they entered a $400 payment and away we go. And you can see I've played with this over time going back and forth with the payment system on it. You can go to payments and see how the money came in and the source of the payment. They paid with Visa on file. So that's all cool. And let's look over at the invoice. So the invoices are partially paid. So amount and balance is 400. So now we know, you know, we can get started on a project. We know we got the money. Uh, it came in because we can confirm the payment here. And by the way, all of this is sending me an email for each step of the way. You can choose it. So it notifies you when someone approves a quote, when someone pays for the deposit, uh, which is of course our cue to go, all right, it's paid and get started. And when you set this up, there's settings so you can set so whoever's sending it. Because one of the ways we do things here at Lawrence Systems is each one of our staff sends out their own quotes and follows up on their own projects. That way, when I send like Corey to do a lot of the wiring jobs, he goes, bids it, quotes it, sends it, 
email comes on his phone, I'm completely out of the loop on the process. That's an important part about the business is not having any barriers where, unless it's some larger approval amounts and there's there's limits I have set that I that Corey knows that say, hey, if it's this much, I wanna review it. Or I, in general, like him to have one of the other staff review the larger quotes. But for small jobs like data, data drops that are just common uh, move ad change orders that come in, gets the call, puts it in there, whatever the rules are for the deposit and terms for that particular client, puts it in and, or he's going to get all the emails on his uh, email account to say, all right, they approved. And then he schedules the date to get the work done. Really straightforward and simple. And that's one of the reasons we like it. Now, at the end of it all, once we're done, we're going to go ahead and you know send the invoice to him in his final balance and just email out the invoice and they can pay the final balance. So email invoice. But I'm actually going to hit save invoice because that's actually going to do it so they can go back to their dashboard and final pay it once the work is done. Let's come back over to the client dashboard and show you how that looks again. So partial, they can click on the invoice. We'll click on this one, the 13 one. I think it's the one we just did. And we'll enter a new card to show you how that looks. And we'll put in a credit card number with an expiration date of Now this is a demo account card number. You can do this. And because our Stripe for this, because this is our demo account, it's in there. Now this is what's kind of cool is it gives them the option to save this card on file with us. So we'll go ahead and pay now and save the card on file. So pay now $400. Oh, it was declined. In test mode, but use a non-test card. That's uh, interesting. I did, that is listed as a test card. Oh, that period on there. Well, let's try this card. I'm curious. All right. Successfully applied payment on there. Now, the clients can do... With the payment methods, they can see, because I didn't save that one, you can have a credit card on file right here. Now, the other payment options, it doesn't let me unlock this, I believe, in the demo mode, are the ACH. So we have that enabled in ours, too, because it also Stripe supports doing uh, bank transfers. And they can update and have all this information on file. And then they can say auto bill payment method, and then we can set up auto billing for them. And let's get over to that, because that's the other side of uh, important aspect is we have an MSP, we have recurring uh, invoicing we do for clients, and this is how that method is handled. We go in here, we let the client set up a payment method, and we do make sure there's a password on portals for that. Let's go actually and uh, view this client. And we're going to hit view in Stripe to bring you to the Stripe page. Now, it actually takes me Stripe and gives an error when I do this because it says, hey, this client is in test mode, uh, so I just brought you to what the Stripe page looks like. This is what we get to see. This is an important aspect is how token billing works with Stripe. So with Stripe and token billing, we did not have the credit card. The credit card did not pass through our hands. <laughs> um, that is an important aspect. Stripe handles it. They've done the integration proper with Invoice Ninja to hand it off to Stripe to do the payment and then hold on to it for tokenized billing. So this keeps you out of the middle of it. Now, I mean, still. Obviously, there's still the potential somewhere to break into our system and hijack it and change where the payment pages were, but they wouldn't get existing credit card numbers because all that we can see is the last couple digits of the card number. And it has a fingerprint unique ID that's created for it, uh, their postal code, whether or not it packed, passed the CVC or zip check, and we can remove cards for them. So if the client doesn't want to manage it themselves uh, or just says, can you take that card off file, we can go in here and delete it. Um, if they have an ACH, that shows up in here as well. And I think it's kind of nice right here is how we can add it for them uh, if they needed help doing it. But the nice thing is with Invoice Ninja and the integration with Stripe, it'll let them add all their bank account. And it does the bank account verification where it puts in Stripe handles this part where it puts in the two deposits and then they go back to their client portal. And from there, they will uh, go and do those verifications and confirm that it is their bank account and in fact they own it. So it's actually really uh, convenient for them. And once they do that, they can set up the billing for it. 
Now let's go over and close too many windows getting open. Uh, let's look at what we do for like recurring billing. So go over here and we'll do new recurring invoice. Now this is where you can choose how they want to do it. And this is an important aspect. Uh, you want them to have to opt in or opt out of it. So please arrange this with your client. Don't just bill them and tell them to do it. You know, you, you work it out with them how you want to do uh, the billing and uh, put that information in there. So like, let's just put, I have a template I set up for MSP workstation, what we're going to do, unit cost. And we'll just say it's, you know, 50 bucks a month for this services and you have five workstations. So there's your 250 a month that we would bill you. Start date, end date, use client terms for the due date for it. Um, where we'd already, let's pretend we've already arranged for the client. They want to do this. And this will allow it to actually, once they go through here and check the box, when we do this, we're going to mark ready. Yep. All right. And it's going to, it's pending and uh, we've, the system is actually set to automatically do it. So it'll say send on July 11th. It's actually going to send it an hour. So it's going to go fire this off and send out that invoice to them. And then when they go over to the portals, which we're going to go over here and refresh, because if we weren't, well, let's click on invoice. That'll be enough to refresh it. Now they got this recurring invoice option. And they can enable or disable auto bill. This is the opt in and out. So it's currently enabled and they have a payment method on file. So it'll automatically uh, bill them. And if we make any adjustments to this, we always notify the clients and they still get this as an attachment, as an email uh, with a PDF attachment so they can see the invoice. Um, but at any time they can go into their client portal and enable or disable automatic payment format or update the payment method on file. And then the system's going to notify us for it. So this whole workflow works really well for us. It's worked well for our clients. Um, just making life easier is the goal for a lot of this as a uh, workflow. And other side notes about the client portal, they can come see the history of it. So this helps so much with reconciliation, uh, having clients have that portal and, and being able to reconcile things without bugging me. So probably a great way I would say to do that. Um, so I, I, it's it's important that way they would know what was paid and what wasn't paid. And that sometimes comes as a confusion to people. But the other advantage of this and the uh, of being able to have my staff quickly create invoices is, and we're going to actually go back over to recurring invoices. I don't want this to go out, so I'm going to delete it. Uh, delete recurring invoice. Are you sure? Absolutely. I don't want a bunch of notices going out to fake email addresses with invoice and payment options. Um, but we do the invoicing really fast like this. So we're going to take another client real quick, like Bob here, and just kind of walk you through the same thing. So we're going to send an invoice to Bob. And this is what also allows us to iterate fast when we're doing this. So fixed outlook problem. And we don't do just MSP. We have a lot of break fix clients. Matter of fact, we have a law firm that we've tried to get on MSP numerous times. We've even said it would save them money. Um, but instead, so far this year, they've spent $7,000 in support fees. <laughs> and by the way, each of their support fees are usually like this. Half hour or um, we're nice to them because they're, they, they're really easy problems uh, all the time. We've done quarter billings. We usually do half hour billing minimum, but we're nice to them. We'll do a quarter billing. Uh, and this is a lot of what we do, fix outlook, uh, whatever you do, you know, deleted too many emails. This is the problem with lawyers. Any emails. Funny that you can't get a lawyer to put you on retainer, but we like them as a client. We're just always, we're amazed at how much they spend with us. We're like, you could save money. We're, we're being as honest as possible, um, but they're not ready for that. But this is what we do to quickly email and invoice this client. And because this system is so simple like that, and for each person logged in, I can look at all of my texts and see what invoices were sent out, how they were sent out. And this whole process of ease of payment for people makes it a lot easier. Now, sometimes we do it a little bit different. Um, we have clients that we know don't like paying invoices after the work's done. And you can set terms in there like they must pay up front and we'll go, no problem. I will certainly help you. Uh, what do you want me to do? And we'll do this and we'll fire off the invoice and we'll let them know they have to pay it. And as soon as they pay it, it's done. So this whole system, like I said, it's really uh, works really well. It's really smooth. The Stripe integration is nice. Being able to manage your clients in the Stripe dashboard uh, to see what they have on file without having to have their credit card number. That's the important part. So you're not just collecting. I don't have this big collection. So in the terms of like a data breach, which is always a worst case scenario, but that 
you hope never happens, but you always should plan for. Um, making sure that you aren't the one in possession of any more data than you need, I think is hugely important is one of the reasons we chose like the Stripe system. And like I said too, you can integrate PayPal uh, when you're setting up the payment gateways in here. And we did that too. So some people go, I just like paying things out of PayPal. That's fine. Uh, what it does when they send an invoice out to someone and they want to pay it and there's PayPal involved, let me bring up an invoice. When they go to pay it, it says MasterCard on file, credit card. It'll actually show two more. Uh, well, one, because of Stripe, it'll say set up bank ACH and the other option says just pay with PayPal. Uh, and it'll just land on the PayPal page for them to log in to their PayPal portal. And it does the same thing. Uh, but that I know of, there's no easy way, there's no integration um, currently with PayPal to do any of the recurring payments and hold the card on file like there is with Stripe. Uh, they actually, when you're setting up the payment gateway in Invoice Ninja, over here, and we go to the online payments. Uh, we pay Stripe Braintree cardless is when you're doing the token billing. Those are the current supported ones for that. Did I know a PayPal doesn't have an option for it, but PayPal owns Braintree and I think that's why there's not a, a PayPal option. So because they own ba Braintree, instead of doing it through PayPal, you just use it in your Braintree account. So assuming that's how it goes. And there are options, uh, check legalities of this, but you can add fees if you want. So uh, you can set up a fee when they use certain types of payment, because maybe there's a uh, gateway or origination fee or something that you want to add to there. It does have that option there. Uh, we don't do it. Uh, nature of our business is um, we, we don't add like an extra fee to use credit card versus mailing a check to us. That seems like it would be, I mean, yes, there is a fee associated with Stripe. There are fees, uh, but for the most part, I don't see, we don't pass that directly along to the client as like a line item because mailing us a check would slow the process down and someone goes, well, I'm going to save money doing the check. And that would just slow the whole thing down and be a pain. So we just, it's worked into our margin as a way that's fixed. Oh, that's kind of an overview of, how we use Invoice Ninja to collect money. And, and you know, and of course, on the side, uh, you can book me and all that goes into the Stripe and PayPal. Uh, but the whole process is, you know, makes us easy to interact with. And I'm going to be mailing these videos where people email me randomly going, I have my credit card number calling in or, you know, because uh, some people we meet on YouTube are a little strange. They sometimes call us and just want to start reading a credit card number to get going with us. I'm like, I, I appreciate the excitement. There's a process, uh, fill the form out, we'll send you a link, you can pay online. And these are the ways that you'll pay online. So if you're gonna be a recurring customer, we'll get you set up an invoice engine and you'll be on the recurring invoice program. Uh, if you're a one-off customer, you're more likely to go through, uh, you can book me just for that service. But some of the uh, starts with you can book me, they become recurring customers that we then go in and uh, add invoice engine because we have a recurring engagement with them or they end up signing up for one of our managed service plans uh, and we take care of them from there. But like I said, it's important that you have easy ways to interact with your clients and to collect payment because uh, payments are what keeps the business blood go flowing. All right, thanks. And uh, I'll leave links to all, you know everything I talked about. I have no offer codes for you can book me or Stripe. I do have a, an affiliate link if you want to sign up with it for Invoice Ninja, uh, but it's free. And all it really does is let them know uh, if you signed up via a, one of my videos. And if you buy, they toss me a small, with, they're only charging $12 a month. It's not it's not that much money that I get from it, uh, but it is appreciated. Anything to help out the channel. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below, which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.